In all of my classes through Bible college and seminary, and in all the preaching books I've read, capturing the audience's attention was a crucial aspect of the introduction of a sermon. You're supposed to use a startling fact or a provocative statement or a funny story. Something engaging, heartwarming, to draw the audience in immediately. Well, apparently, someone forgot to tell Matthew about this little rule of communication because he begins his gospel with a long, long genealogy. This genealogy is one long, astonishing fact. It links Jesus with the beloved King David of the Jews and Father Abraham, father of the Jewish nation. And in Jewish culture, lineage was a big deal. You had to be able to prove your lineage in order to show that you could live in certain places since the land was divided up at one time, and it was divided up according to tribes. And you certainly had to prove your lineage if you claimed to be a priest or a king. And that's exactly what Jesus claimed, and it was what Matthew had set out to prove. So Jesus' lineage needed to be proven in order for Jewish people who weren't around to hear him teach and see his miracles to consider him credible. And when we look at the beginning of this genealogy, we read the first two names of Abraham and Isaac. And what's incredible about these two names is that Abraham was so old when Isaac was born that he and his wife should have been dead. In fact, the author of Hebrews says that Abraham was as good as dead. That's how old he was. He shouldn't have been able to produce children, but he did. Why? Because God is faithful to his promises. That's why. And so from the beginning, we see that this kingdom that Jesus institutes is going to be a supernatural kingdom. That's the promise that it is dependent on God doing something. So what do we learn from this genealogy? Well, we, we see that Israel had no reason to be proud of itself. Salvation and redemption and restoration is not from man. It's not from within. It is from God. And we see that there is a wideness in God's mercy and forgiveness. David, the great king of Israel, who stole another man's wife and had the husband put to death, receives forgiveness and grace and mercy from the hand of God. No one is able to save himself. All, even the best on the list, stood in dire need of redemption by the blood of the promised one. Today, when you pray, please pray for Joshua Fury and his family, our missionaries in Zambia. And also remember the Cura Word broadcast that's heard in Tanzania.